Welcome to the fifth episode in a series where I'm trying to make high quality PCBs using a cheap CNC router. In the last episode we did a bunch of experiments and got pretty close to being able to make a usable PCB. In this episode we will take what we learnt from that last episode and hopefully be able to reach that goal. I'll also include some information about the settings that I'm using in case somebody wants to try to replicate this process themselves. Now the whole process to make only one board takes nearly four hours to complete. You can see the list here, there's quite a lot of steps involved. But as a lot of the steps of this process has already been shown in some good detail in prior episodes, for this episode I'm going to squeeze it all down into a quick six minute montage. So please just sit back and enjoy the music for a couple of minutes.
So here it is, the completed board. Now apparently I meant to ask people to subscribe, like, comment earlier in the video like this. So if any of those options captures your fancy, then it would be much appreciated. Now as you saw in the montage, I managed to fail again when clearing these pads here. Now it's not as badly burned as in the last episode, but it's still not usable as it is. The issue really just comes down to the amount of heat being pumped into the copper surface and the ability of that surface to dissipate the heat quickly enough so not to damage the substrate of the PCB itself. This behaviour is pretty much the same as if you applied too much heat when reworking a PCB. If the board gets too hot, the pads typically just fall off. Now if you saw the last episode, you will have seen me doing some testing to determine the best settings and the results look pretty promising actually. But as I did the testing on a large copper surface instead of a small pad itself, the resulting settings that I got were still way too hot. This was particularly notable on pads that don't have any traces at all leading away from them. You can see that they are just simply all missing. And even these pads with just a short trace between two pads here, they are also notably damaged with the mask resin puffing up around the edge of the pad. Now to resolve this I redid the testing and came up with new settings that actually would work. And those settings are 800mm a minute feed speed and using about 40% power. And that gives, from a heat over time perspective, a much reduced overall heat loading by around about 50% I think. So that's a pretty big reduction and it has the benefit of completing the job much quicker too. There are also a couple other minor issues with this board, but nothing all that fatal. In any case, let me mention them for your reference. Firstly, amazingly some of the holes in the pads were still not drilled all the way through, so I actually ended up manually drilling those through. Now changing the drill depth solves this, but ultimately the cause of the problem comes from all the play in the z-axis on that cheap CNC. This results in less drill depth than is actually specified when the setup. Secondly, I was clearing the resin at the edge of the board here to keep it clear of the cut edge of the board in an effort to avoid any chipping in cleanup. Unfortunately I did not clear enough or give myself enough margin, and as you can see I managed to chip it when cleaning the edge with a file. Thirdly and finally, I think the pad sizes I'm using here are way too small. They'll probably work fine I think, but I think a little bit bigger would probably be a bit better in this case. The overall accuracy and alignment of the board looks pretty good, and that makes sense as nearly all the processes are made with a laser, and that only gets aligned once. Even so, it's still not possible to get those pad holes perfectly centred, and this is due to the run out of the current cheap spindle that I'm using. The finish also looks really nice, and even the laser burnt seal screen actually looks pretty good this time round. So with all that noted, I went straight off and made another board to try to save all those problems. And here it is here. So here are both the completed boards. Old one on the left, new one on the right. At first glance, they seem much the same, but a closer look shows the new board is much improved, and of course all the pads are now present. Now I didn't bother filming much of the work for this board, as it's just pretty much the same process as the last board you've just seen. But I did take a couple of shots to point out just a few things here. Here you can see I've beefed up the size of all of those pads, they look a bit more substantial now. I also beefed up the width of the traces between these two pads here. And for those two pads here that had no trace whatsoever connected, I added a short fat trace that goes nowhere, but this will allow them to cope with a little bit more heat I think. So this, combined with the settings to lower the heat level each pad gets, ultimately stops any pads from getting damaged. I also upgraded my automated etching agitation method. In combination with the CNC, I'm now using the rotating base from the UV exposure to slowly change the orientation, which should allow for a much more even edge. Before using that, I was actually just rotating it manually, and while that works fine, I had this rotator on hand, so I thought, why not use it? So here's what the pads look like after clearing. You can see there is no lifting of the surrounding UV resin at all, so that is a clear sign that the heat levels are just right. And even though that with these new settings we're pumping a lot less heat in, you can still see that the pads have been cleared very well, and mostly look shiny and clean. And I'm also sure the attentive of you will have noticed the wider board outline and clearing of the resin here as well. And as a side note here, I also wanted to point out that both board silk screens burns have been filled in with resin to see how that looks. I use green resin on the old board and white resin on the new board. To be honest, I don't think it's worth all the effort to resin fill in this case. In the future I will just use the laser burn as it is. Really only in the case where I'm burning a silk screen into the resin mask surface itself will I bother with a resin fill like this. So that means that any surface mount boards I make in the future will likely get this sort of treatment. Anyway, that's enough for the inspection. Let's get some components on this board and see if it even works. 
In all likelihood, there's probably some silly mistake in the design, but whatever. Let's just build it and see. Well, look at that. It actually works. Absolutely amazing, right? Well, in all truth, there were actually a couple of problems that had to be fixed before the board would work. Firstly, a track had become connected to an unwanted pad due to the fact that I'd increased the size of those pads. Secondly, I also had one track going to the wrong pad, and that was because of a design error in the original circuit diagram I'd made. Now, it was actually pretty easy to rework the board and solve these little problems with minimal impact to the board itself, so for this little test board, it's not really a big problem. But it really proves my original point about the benefits of being able to make your own PCBs. I mean, here is a case where I could relatively easily, quickly, and cheaply turn around a number of revisions of a board to weed out any issues. Overall, I really like the quality and finish of the boards too. Uh, for low volumes, there seems to be absolutely no reason you could not use these boards for practical applications. Building of the board itself went pretty smooth and easy. But some of the pads were a little bit difficult to solder to. This is likely due to some type of residue area that has remained on the surface there. Possibly it might be worth trying 50% power at 800 millimeters a minute to see if that clears the problem up. Or maybe I need to change the post-burn cleaning regime to better remove any remaining residue. For the next act, I'm planning to make a surface mount version of this exact design. Or possibly I'll drop these unnecessary resistors that I have here on every LED. I'm also going to try to have the most dense design I possibly can make making use of a double-sided board and some type of vias. Not really sure how that's all going to work yet. To top it off, I will also be adding a nice white silk screen to at least one side of the board in any case. So if any of that catches your interest, then be sure to join along in the next episode. Of course, I hope to see you then.